Aloha. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Miss V, the diva. So I know all of us were a little thrown off here on the West Coast. We did not get to see our being Mary Jane until an hour ago. And I figured I'm going to review this, but I figure I better do it right now while I can because um, uh, my schedule is starting to fill up. But I did want to start reviewing this because there's a lot of issues um, that we... As not only black people, but especially the black professional female, we should probably talk about. All right, but let's get started. Hey, Felicia, I see that you are on. Um, so, anywho, uh, it's been a year later since being Mary Jane. The balance of being Mary Jane uh, kind of hung in the balance. Number one, uh, Gabrielle Union, an actor that plays being Mary Jane, was suing BET because BET was doing something that was probably against Union rules where they were trying to film uh, multiple episodes. So they were going to try to uh, film season four four and season five which sounds to me like they were just trying to burn it off because as you know um the what is it the brock akil i can't remember is it the akils either way they are gone to work on another project and so now uh the creator or the the director and producer of of, of movies like what is it almost christmas and the best man um, he is the one that has taken over. So when we open up, Mary Jane uh, is in New York now. She is not on the desk per se. Uh, she's outside in the cold and we know New York gets very, very cold. But before we even start there, she's talking to the $20,000 matchmaker. And so Mary Jane is of the mindset that, honey, I got me a new job. So I need me a new man and a fresh start. Me and David didn't work out. Uh, I've escaped the South and I've car, uh, you know, I've moved my way back up North and I need me a new man. Plus it's cupping season or whatever they call it. Either way, it's cold and I need a man. The most interesting thing about this episode is the fact that the uh, matchmaker is very professional. Uh, there are some people out there that will simply take your money and run with it. But in this episode, we see the matchmaker essentially tell Mary Jane, you know, after looking at your assessment and paying attention to you, there's just too many fallacies and issues and flaws in your own personality that you refuse to acknowledge. A lot of blind spots. So, um... I'm going to have to let you go. And don't worry, sweetie. I will give you a full refund. I was like, damn, that is cold blooded. You know, you must be bad off when the uh, matchmaker and it's also professional, too, because she's like, I'm not going to take your money. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to waste anyone's time. I'm just going to, you know, give you your money back because this is not going to work out. Another thing we see is that Mary Jane is trying to be this very liberated woman. And we saw this at the end of last season, too, when she decided to experiment, I think, in some ways, because her ex, David, who is biracial, you know, his mom is Meredith Baxter, the family ties mom. And, uh, you know, he's biracial dude half black half white but we all know in this society if you look black you're just black to everybody but uh i think that she decided to experiment dating a white male uh just because he ended up having a child with a white female but now she's back to the brothers she's at a comedy club i can't remember which one it was was it caroline's i really i really couldn't tell i hope one day to grace that stage um but She's there, her and Kara, partners in crime, back together again, kicking it. And she meets this wonderful brother with this lovely London accent. And she decides that she's going to take him home and have a little fun with him. And uh, I found it very interesting uh, that uh, she used a rubber band to let him know if she liked it fast or slow or keep it right there. I was like, I ain't never heard of the rubber band method, but okay, girl, we learning something this season from being Mary Jane. And I think it's just one of those things that some females are guilty of doing is, is, is kind of being a little reckless in love, you know, or, or seeking love or just seeking a body. And I think that's what Mary Jane is going through because she's so hurt and devastated. You know, in last season, at the top of the season, her best friend who betrayed her by cheating 
with David. So the love of your life and your best friend for life decide to have a liaison and then your best friend before you can even reconcile commits suicide. Luckily, Mary Jane got out of it. I understand the SEC essentially fired her and Kara because Kara had that HR complaint launched against her. And uh, but Mary Jane is making the best of it. A great day, USA out in the cold. I found it interesting that dude stalked her. <laughs> He showed up at the jobs because it was his birthday. So I thought that was interesting about this episode. Uh, meanwhile, back home, if you remember, uh, the episode concluded last season with her niece uh, being tased by the police because the police chose to antagonize her and pull her over. Nisi is having her own conundrum. We know that Nisi, uh, has certain insecurities. Uh, she feels abandoned by her mother. And, you know, in some ways by her father, because her father abused drugs for some time and then ended up procreating with another woman and seemed to be more active in that sibling's life more so than in her very own. So she has her own complications, but apparently it's since in the year in the time that the year has passed, uh, Nisi had the story gained a lot of traction thanks to her aunt, which of course Mary Jane says that was part of the reason why she was, you know, pretty much shown the door. So Nisi now, if you notice her second baby daddy, he back on the scene, Dante the Filipino. I was like, when he said, you getting the settlement money, right? You be cool, right? And I was like, you need to get away from him because the only reason he's back around in your life, young lady, is not because he wants you. He wants that check. And if you see the previews coming up, she does get apparently a portion of that settlement fund and they out buying whips and cars and stuff. But you got kids. OK, young people do better. Uh, so I'm hoping maybe her dad or even her other uncle that was living out here in L.A. Um, can help her out um let's see what other issues i found it interesting that when london town uh showed up at the job and she let him know that basically what happened between us that first night that was going to be an only night it was like snapchat and if you're familiar with snapchat usually most of your stories and pictures you can set them to disappear within 24 hours so i was like damn and then i gave that the Issa ray broken pussy so i was like oh my god what the hell i mean you getting some but you're pushing the men away mary jane's older brother i believe the one that was drug addicted uh he seems to be really trying to get his life together and trying to help his daughter but niecy i think if they have not sent her anywhere they need to send her to see a therapist or someone that can help her and even her kids because you know her her older child witnessed her being tased by the police uh, i am so excited to see valerie pettiford back on the scene uh, you know she is Rhonda, uh the um main anchor at great day usa and uh, it's so good to see i absolutely love valerie pettiford years ago i got tickets to go see her and my cousin sharita and i went to go see her perform they closed off the lobby in the pantages theater for her to just sing and do show tunes and whatever music she has a beautiful voice and she's a beautiful person i just Oh my God, I just love her. Uh, but it's good to see her. And I'm glad that she took Mary Jane to side, even though Mary Jane, you know, has been in the game doing the anchor thing, the news reporting and that type of thing for some time. But Mary Jane was being led to believe that she was going to get this promotion and that she was going to be on the anchor desk because Rhonda uh, basically had not signed her contract, which would we learn later would be good for five years. And so the executive producer is wooing her. And then that's when Rhonda said, mm -mm, let me holler at you, sweetheart. Let me tell you what the real deal is. They're trying to pit, pit us sisters against one another, essentially, is what is going on. And, uh, you know, it makes for a good storyline. Even though we're supposed to be reporting the news, it's all about reality TV. So I thought that was awesome that she did tell Mary Jane the truth about what was going on. And not only that, as soon as Mary Jane stepped out of her office, it wasn't a ploy. It wasn't a mind game it was just you know the executive producer comes to her and says well the office of business affairs is saying that you know um we better pull back and just let you get through your probation period 
And at that point, Mary Jane was devastated and wanted to give up. You know how she puts post-it notes, inspiring words all over the place. And Kara has to talk her down. So she's going to stay in New York and she's going to give it a run. Um, so I think that's all I've got on this episode. It's it's, it, But you can see that you have a, a, a black single female who's... I don't know, maybe it's because she feels like she is obligated to have a husband and children. You know, these are things that society place on us. And I think that, the, you know, not just because I'm not married, um, you know, I'm not per se single either. But it's just like... If I'm 40, there's a problem with me not being married or never having had children. Um, I think that those are pressures that people put on on others. And I think that maybe that's what Mary Jane is looking for. Because you remember, I think it was last season or the season before she had stole David's uh, uh, sperm and was having it in the freezer in the ice cream box. So, I mean... You know, and she was going to try to, you know, get pregnant that way. So, I mean, it's just one of those things. But I, I'm definitely going to try to continue to review this season. I think I've tried to review it in the past before, but I really enjoy being Mary Jane. Um, I love Gabrielle Union. I loved her hair. Oh, my God. I think everyone is doing like the split in the middle and the bouncy, you know, little wave, the big waves. I really, really like that. As a matter of fact, I think I have. Maybe next time I'll put that hair on. Fuck for my next review uh but that's all i've got i see that some people are watching and joining in the audience do you have any comments you would like to share about being mary jane before i sign off and finish editing my thoughts on um president obama speaking of which oh my god i was just talking about cory booker in my obama video and lo and behold guess who's on being mary jane cory booker if y'all don't know him, he was in New Jersey. He was in Newark. He was the mayor from Newark initially. Uh, PBS did a wonderful expose on him living in the projects and living on food stamps just to show people that you can't really make it in the projects with food stamps. Okay, low income is it, it's, it needs some needs to be done. And now he's the senator from New Jersey and he is a very handsome man. Um, but anyway, he was on there too. So I was excited to see that. But I think that's all I've got. I was concerned when Mary Jane found out that dude was a stand up comedian. I was like, uh oh, girl, this could end bad because you could end up being a punchline. I know I have some punchlines uh, from um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that are part of my stand up uh, so uh, my friend Felicia says that we should bring back Loretta Devine's crazy ass okay David Lee Talbert if you do happen to watch this video we would love to see Loretta Devine's crazy behind make an appearance on, on this season if that's possible if all of the episodes are not already in the can alright well Cheryl thanks for joining Shantavia thanks for joining and there's probably uh, quite a few other of you. That's the one thing I don't like about Facebook Live. They don't tell you who's watching. Snapchat tells you who's watching. By the way, in case you guys didn't know, I did join Snapchat. I have no clue how to use it. Uh, but I am Miss Sophia the Diva over there on Snapchat. I have nothing on there other than this. I don't, I guess it's a profile pic. I don't like them. They don't let you upload pictures of your own. I don't like that. But the filters are sickening. But that's all I've got, guys. Y'all have a great night. Oh. Wait a minute. What episode was this? So this was season four, episode one, Get Naked. And we all know she got naked in this episode with rubber bands and Snapchat. Anyway, that's all I got. I've been Miss Sophia the Diva, and you have been all that.